Yo, 2008 Kia Sportage with a 2.7 liter V6. This thing was low on refrigerant last year. I put a little bit in here just to make it work. And it's low again this year. I didn't put any dye oil in it, but I looked around for some kind of leak. And as you can see on the compressor, it's all coated with oil. There's a little bit of oil that's spat out on that high side refrigerant line. So that must be a leaker. That's what the underside of this thing looks like. Looks pretty nice and juicy to me. I just had the victim go on Amazon and get some cheap Chinese stuff. Cheap as you can get it. Mail order. Looks like good enough stuff. So I'll be tossing that in there. 21 millimeter tire. With cheesy wheel lock. I got a plasticky cover here. Looks like 310 millimeters on this. Okay, 410 millimeters. I have a serpentine belt tensioner here. It looks like somebody butchered this up pretty well. I just got a little 3 8 inch breaker bar here. Give that a yank. I can get this belt out of the way now. I'm gonna take this plastic cover off of here. Give myself a little more room. Looks like there's a fender clip that should have been right here that's gone. Somebody cut a little chunk out of this too, probably to get at the oil filter to make less of a mess and do the easy oil change thing. All I see on it are 12 millimeters. Let's see if I can break any of these. Kind of difficult to see all this stuff. I think I got the right camera angle on it though. I got a connector here. I'm just gonna wiggle this around and give it a tug. Nope, I broke it. Oh, ain't that a shame. There's a little button you can push in here. I can unplug this wire and uh, I can break that. It's fine because um, that's on the old compressor. I have a 12 millimeter on top of these AC refrigerant lines. Like I say, you can't really see them. I just gotta kind of feel around for it. Stick a ratchet on that. I'm just using a quarter inch ratchet with a deep well. I'm pretty sure I got all of the refrigerant out of this thing, so it, it shouldn't make a mess. I'm trying to get a better, less horrible angle on this camera. It's not really happening. Looks like I can sort of see the bolts from this angle over here. That was the high side pressure. And there's a low side bolt for it too. Got that one. Now I should be able to just wiggle these lines a little bit. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And they're supposed to come out. There's the low side. Boy, this high side line's really stuck. Okay, I got those out. Now there's two more bolts on the top of this compressor. One I can barely see. There's an amazing bracket on here. Looks like a wire for the oil pressure switch. I just pinch the connector together, try to get it out of that hole and get the wire out of the way. I'm gonna sneak my hand down here. There's a 12 millimeter here and a 12 millimeter here. I'm gonna to try to get this hardest one out first because I can't even see the thing. Same thing, I'm just using a quarter inch. 
Looks like my fan shroud's in the way, but I can get it out. Now I'm back under the truck and I got an oil pressure switch to deal with. This just has a little tab you just push in and get this wire out of the way. I got two more 12 millimeters on here. I'm just going to leave this metal bracket on this wire. Kind of flop it out of the way. I got one more 12 millimeter right here. And I'm not so sure if this thing's gonna come out yet, but I'm gonna try to sneak it out now. Get a little screwdriver under here and try to pry the thing out. It's got some alignment pins on it. little finagling but it comes out of there had the thing drip some oil on me it looks like this oil pressure switch might be leaking a little bit a little drip on the ground oh yeah that switch is wet I'm gonna put an oil pressure switch in it for the guy too now I'm gonna want to try to get as much refrigerant oil out of this as I can and measure it I'm just gonna hold on to the compressor side and spin it see if anything wants to come out of this thing I got nothing so generally you want to put in as much as you take out and add three ounces so I got nothing so I add three and with a small leak you want to add an extra ounce in a big leak you want to add three so since it's a small leak and I can't get anything out of here so I can't measure extra I'm just gonna put four ounces in the new stuff. The tag under the hood calls for 200 to 215 cc's of PEG ND oil number eight. These two compressors look to be about the same enough. Um, it says here 200 cc's is just over six ounces and I'm gonna put four ounces in here. First thing I'm going to want to do is get a six millimeter Allen and get these bolts out of here. A lot of times these are vacuum sealed when they're really nice. And uh, yeah, vacuum pressure, what's the difference, right? That's a good sign. You want that to happen. I'm going to try to dump all the oil out of this, whatever's in here, as much as I can. They're usually pre-filled. You never know how much they put in it though. You never know what type it is either. It's probably ester oil or PEG 46. I'm just gonna let that drip for a while. I think I got as much out of here as I could. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's almost exactly four ounces. So technically I could have just put this thing in there without doing anything. Better safe than sorry. I'm gonna dump this out now. I have some PEG 46 here. That should be the same stuff. I'm gonna put four ounces in here. I'm gonna dump that in the big hole. That's the cold side. Oh, that was thirsty. Took all of that like nothing. Sometimes you gotta turn this compressor real slow to get the last bit of it in. Sometimes that'll make a mess and it'll shoot out all over the place. I didn't have to do any of that though. I'm gonna put this plug back in just so when I install the thing it doesn't make a huge mess and go all over the place. They gave me some O-rings with the thing. I took the old ones out and they look wrong. They look a little skinny. So I got, a, I got an O-ring kit from Harbor Freight and those those look like the right ones so I'm gonna use these instead of the ones that it came with I put the new o-rings on the lines now I'm gonna try to stuff this thing in here hopefully these 
things won't get in the way. They just might. These caps are in my way. Hopefully I can take these out without making a huge mess. Leave the little rubber in there. That's convenient. That's fun squirreling that thing in. I'm gonna line up one bolt. I got the two bottom bolts snugged up. I suppose I'll torque down the top ones before I tighten those bottom ones. Just gonna feel my way around for a hole. Now these 12 millimeter bolts, they only need to be tightened to like 14 foot pounds. So they don't need to be very tight. Okay, I got the bottom bolts tight and that bracket on there for the oil pressure switch. I can pull this rubber plug out. I put refrigerant oil on these on these O-rings. I don't know if I can get these from down here or not. Looks like I gotta get them from up top. Same with these, I wanna tighten them to about 12 to 14 foot pounds. Now that I have all the lines hooked up, I can get at my cold side pressure line, which is the big one. I made this amazing apparatus for my for my vacuum pump. Plug this in here. Got a nice little gauge on it. I can run this for about 15 minutes. And while that's running, I'm gonna hook up the rest of some of this stuff. I'm gonna try to replace this oil pressure switch. I got a little drain pan on the floor just in case it dribbles a little oil. This is a 24 millimeter. Get a little bit of the crud off of here. Make sure it doesn't fall in the hole. Try to start the new one. In case you're wondering how tight these get, they should be about 16 Newton meters. Or um, I just go finger tight and then I turn it three quarters of a turn to a turn and a half. They're tapered pipe and there's already sealant on the thread so I shouldn't have to do anything, put any thread sealer on it or anything. And if I'm wrong, it's gonna leak. Plug that bad boy in. Now I can try to find my wire, the air conditioning and plug that in. I don't see any amazing bracket on this uh, new AC compressor, so I think it'll be just fine dangling in the wind here. I could zip tie it down to this, this oil fill tube. I think I'm going to do that. Just one little zip tie. That ain't going anywhere. Do the belt. Do the cover. Might as well give the guy a free clippy thing. Do the cover. I probably wouldn't do over eight foot pounds and all these covers and junk. Eighty foot pounds on these tires. Now I have a little ball valve on my amazing apparatus. I'm gonna shut that off and I'm gonna watch this this gauge. I'll let it sit for about a half an hour to an hour make sure that needle doesn't move. If it moves down then I know I still got a leak and I'm wrong about something. Well, I cooked and ate a pizza. Looks like my vacuum's holding just fine. I can take this cold side off. Unscrew my high side pressure line. I got a manifold with a big tank so I don't have to use them cheesy little Walmart cans. 
says I need 1.18 pounds of refrigerant in here. Turn on my cold side. I'm at about a pound now. Looks like it's all it's going to take, so i got to turn this valve off. I'm going to start the car, run the AC on high, make sure the system works. I heard that. I'm going to slowly open this up and add a couple more ounces. One pound, two ounces, that should be good enough. Now I can run this for a while and let the pressure stabilize. Looks like it's pretty stable. I got 35 pounds on the low side, about 270 on the high side, and it's about 80 degrees with about 65% humidity. So that's the pressures I got. I'm gonna call this a job, okay, bye.